Many Nigerians were taken aback when they found out that Binance, a popular crypto exchange, would be shutting down all operations in the country by March 8. Despite facing regulatory hurdles in the past, people were puzzled about why the top crypto exchange would leave the fast-growing market for Bitcoin usage. My guest, Nathaniel Luz, is the CEO and co-founder of FlynnCap, where he leads the team in creating top-notch financial solutions for businesses. He is also the brain behind Chekwa, a savings and contributions app that follows the order of the traditional Nigerian adjust system. Before founding his startups, Nathaniel worked with several organizations like Paxful, Dash, and Yolo Group. He also digital is the cash and Bitcoin is cash, two books that provide comprehensive insight into the innovative solutions offered by cryptocurrency and blockchain in the modern banking industry. He is currently on the third boot, Yabanobi Silicon Valley, which contains a timely message for all startup founders and entrepreneurs in Nigeria. He is a dynamic and inspiring leader who fosters a culture of innovation, collaboration, and excellence within his company. Thanks for joining me in Asanio. Thank you so much. It's great to be here today. All right, let's see if we can actually quickly run through what we have for this morning. Now, while the Naira seems to have improved after the crackdown, crypto expert and investors say the entire episode has left a bitter taste in their mouths as regards investing in the country. What's the true picture? So, whenever there is a ban on things like this, it affects confidence. Right, so what the government has done is to use its veto powers to go hard against Binance. And that has actually negatively impacted the confidence of users, investors, and everything. So there was actually an issue between the government and Binance, right? So there are blames on both sides. But dialogue is also going to be the way out of whatever we find ourselves in. Right, so we feel like the issue shouldn't even have gotten to this point in the first place, whereby we have finance executives detained and all of that. And this just points to the fact that the government is saying that there are several crypto exchanges in Nigeria. Nigeria is the fastest growing crypto market in the world, but these exchanges are not compliant to the Nigerian government. These exchanges are not relating with the Nigerian government. These exchanges do not have a relationship with the Nigerian government. So that's what the government is saying. The government is saying you cannot be processing billions of dollars in our markets and there's no form of formal relationship um, between us. There's no form of licensing and um, there's no form of registration and you're just doing what you're doing in our market as though we actually do not... Um, as though we don't exist, you know, you're just coming in here, playing and going out, what you cannot do in other markets without relating with the government agencies. So I think that's the issue. And we just need to look for a way forward from here. And the way forward is we need compliant exchanges. And this is where homegrown solutions come to play, right? No one can understand you better than you understand yourself. No one can understand the modalities and the uniqueness of the Nigerian crypto market more than we Nigerians that play in this industry. So what we need to do is to come to the table with the government, rather what the government needs to do is to come to the table with us and for us to agree on a couple of things. The licenses have just been released some months ago, you know, create space, create sandboxes for startups to work with the government and say this is how we can build crypto compliant exchanges. And the reason is because if the government just chooses to use pressure and just ban and unban, what would happen is People would not stop using crypto, but all of this volume will be driven on the ground. So you see the rise of the P2P market, of the black market, and all of that. Mm. But it doesn't have to get to that. We can have proper exchanges that are compliant. So I think that's the way forward. All right. Okay. Now, whether Binance has contributed to Nigeria's worsening economic picture is certainly up for debate. Although, to uh, that, uh, to the extent that uh, lots of people have been commenting, you know. But uh, let's really talk about some other issues right now. Uh, it's worth noting that although the Nigerian government moved to block access to other crypto platforms, seemingly only Binance is under fire. What does this really mean to you? Uh, Binance was the largest exchange in the Nigerian market, in the Nigerian P2P market. So if you were to have a regulatory conversation, I think you'd want to go to the biggest guy and speak to the biggest guy. Do you understand? And whatever applies to them, that applies to everybody. 
You understand? So I think that was why the government went over Binance. Binance was controlling a very huge chunk of the crypto, of the crypto and P2P market in Nigeria. Okay, you've talked about compliance now. I just want to find the way forward. Uh, of course, uh, these players are, you know, doing business in the Nigerian space and that they have to follow regulatory, you know, framework and all of that. But what are the other key issues that we should be looking at in terms of ensuring that uh, cryptocurrency or, you know, the the crypto version, as it were, you know, just that takes its own place here in Nigeria and indeed Africa. So, first off, it's going to be very difficult to have one crypto super app globally, right? Because it's going to be very... And cryptocurrency exchanges are financial institutions. So to have one exchange that's going to be compliant in Ghana, in Nigeria, in the UK, it's going to be really difficult. And this means that we need to see homegrown solutions in each case that cater for the needs of that region. You understand? Like, the Nigerian government has its own fears and its own worries. It's different from what the Kenyan government would have and the Kenyan government would want to require, according to their own situation. That's why at Flinkab, we help OTC exchanges with a proper structure that they need to operate as proper exchanges. And we understand the uniqueness of the Nigerian market. For instance, the Nigerian market is not big on crypto spot trading or institutional trading or Bitcoin ETFs. Those are not our problem. In the US, most of the regulations are Bitcoin ETFs and all of this. But in Nigeria, it's on the P2P side. And the government is saying, if you're doing this amount of volume, we need to see this amount of KYC. We need to ensure that there is no um, terrorism financing happening here. We need to ensure that because of the volatile nature of of the Naira to dollar in the last few months, we need to ensure that people are not taking advantage of that to manipulate the rates, right? That's not a problem in Kenya, for instance. That's not a problem in Cameroon, but that's a major concern in Nigeria. So the way forward is we need to power local exchanges in each region. You understand? We cannot, I do not see a future where we have one super exchange globally. Okay, we let, need me to have in. Nasanya, let me butt in. Now, when you say we need to empower um, uh, more exchanges, are you saying that we need to like, uh, you know, start, uh, you know, getting more uh, homegrown uh, exchanges from the country and people get it into exchanges? Or, but how possible and how lucrative is that? As in, I'm thinking it's something that should be very capital intensive. Um, actually not, you know, it's, uh, it's not really on the capital side. It's okay. more on the side that the government has to make this thing doable. For instance, they have to remove the fears. They have to make tax grants. They have to, you know, make startups know that, see, you guys can play in this space. You guys are safe. So it's more of a thing of confidence. It's not really a thing of capital. It's more of a thing of, see, we trust you people. Go and do your thing. You need time to grow. If there are any issues, we will not ban you. We will call you to the table and discuss with you. And that's one of the things we're trying to do for a lot of OTC actually. See, there's a lot of volume happening in Nigeria. True. But it doesn't even pay us as a people because these things are not instit institutionalized. Right? Meaning, even the OTC exchangers doing all the streets, they can't raise funds, they can't build up, and people are just doing their things on WhatsApp, on Telegram. There's no proper structure. The same things we do, it's just like the same businesses our parents run, SME here and there, is what people run everywhere in the world in Asia and co, and they build them into proper businesses that help hold the economy. You understand? Mm. You cannot have proper businesses when you don't have license. You cannot have proper businesses when you don't. It doesn't even pay the government in the long run, right? Because if you really want companies that will pay taxes, you really want companies that these guys have to have money. I mean, if all I have is a hundred naira and you are taxing me, I mean, how much could you get out of it? But if I have a hundred million naira and you're taxing me, it's two different things, right? So yeah. what we need to do is to empower and support our local homegrown solutions like ThinkUp is currently doing. And we also know the partnership from the angle of the government that says, hey, you guys can be free to breathe, right? Okay. Let's, Speaking let's of this breathe. partnership <laughs> now, um, Nasanya, so what, what's, what's in the pipeline? So what conversations um, have uh, the, the key actors have been doing in terms of um, jaw joining well, with the federal government to ensure that these structures and this confidence level that you're talking about are actually uh, being discussed? Yeah, so we've actually been having conversations with the government dating as early as 2017, 2016 on crypto in the space with the SEC, with NITA, you know, the SEC licenses were just released some months ago and a number of startups, including mine, think is planning on getting this license. But we also need to be sure that after this license, nobody will be banned. Mm. Because, I mean, 
and the license requires a one billion naira bond of which you take seventy five percent of that. Just basically like your normal PSSP license, sure. MMB license, and all those things. But we need to be sure that just like banks are a bit sure that okay, if we do this, even if there's an issue. There are ways to resolve it. Do you understand? But people also need to be sure that, see, if we must raise this fund and commit this amount of money to getting this license, there will be no surprises tomorrow. I think that's the point we are in. It's not like we don't want to pay for the license, mm. but we just want to be sure that there would be no surprises going forward. Okay, because of um, government policies and sometimes how uh, they could be very, very erratic. I understand the part that you're talking about. But as we move on right now, let's talk about the future, really, of uh, the cryptocurrency, the Bitcoins and all of that in Nigeria. Because Nigerians are actually very, very involved uh, with all of the regulations, with all of the actions and inactions. Uh, how do we see, uh, how do you see uh, cryptocurrency, you know, thriving in Nigeria, let's say, in the next five months? Because some people right now might not really be investing as much as it is because of what's going around the crypto generally globally i would just say this is a chaotic situation and chaos is a period of builders right so i see that would see more people building more solutions the usage of crypto in africa cannot go down because crypto is a lifeline for africans right so for people in the west in the germany and co I mean, it's just a luxury. That's why they talk ETFs and all that. We don't talk ETFs here because we don't have that luxury of time. I mean, if you're Nigerian, you can't send money through PayPal, right? You, I mean, you just grow up to realize that you've been cut out from the global financial system. So crypto is our way to connect back. So we don't even see crypto as, yeah, we invest in it, we trade it and all of that. But the first thing is that crypto gives us a leverage. It means I can wake up right now and make a payment to someone in India and receive a payment from China in five minutes. That's what crypto does for me. Mm. So crypto is more like my visa to the global economy, which is why whether you ban, you unban, you reban, people would still use it because it's solving a damn need, not a want. Mm. Okay, I get, I get all of that, Nathaniel, but the question right now would be uh, how far or when can we see a situation where uh, Nigerians can actually you know, play in the crypto space and, uh, of course, do all their transactions, even maybe make payments uh, for local stuff on, uh, with crypto as it is now? Because uh, f in my head, I'm thinking crypto is uh, dollar-denominated and um, some people have issues with that. Um, crypto is not really dollar denominated, it is fiat denominated. Okay. It just happens to be that dollar is the de facto currency of every country in the world. So if yeah. you want to import things, everybody's saying dollar, you want to do this dollar. So dollar has just become that central standard, which is why we actually use it. You mm. can measure crypto in Naira. Crypto adoption is growing. We, we have the necessary investors, we have the necessary startups. All we just need in this part of the world, only thing missing is confidence. The confidence, it, it's the same reason why Nigerian startups incorporate in Delaware, right? You are here, you are making Niger, but you are gathering it and paying hundreds and thousands of dollars every year. Mm. It's just the confidence. Even people that have not been to Delaware too are incorporating in Delaware. It's the confidence it gives you. So what our industry lacks is the confidence, and that confidence can only be created by the government. Okay. So as we round off now, as we round off from this particular discourse, let's talk about... Uh, uh, for investors right now, what would you say to them? Because over time we've, we've talked about how you could actually just uh, use a cryptocurrency as a hedge you know, for the future and all of that. But some people seemingly have some sort of uh, disbelief in the crypto. You've talked about um, chaotic situations and all of that. But for people who would want to be investing in crypto, what should they be looking at? What should they be hopeful of? And um, just what exactly should be... Uh, the main uh, hope that you can give to them? So, um, cryptocurrency is here um, for the long term. And just like every asset class, gold, that, the precious metals, the gold, the silver, oil, commodities, and all of that, real estate, and all that, people tend to hedge on them. And say, can I buy low and sell high? Right? So that's what everybody tends to do. And people also try to do that with crypto. And I mean, I mean that's fine. It's the market is the market, right? So for people who want to play in the crypto market, just ensure that you're compliant. Just ensure that you're only dealing with people you know because there are lots of KYC issues. So we've seen issues in which people receive fraudulent Naira due to a certain transaction. So just ensure that you're dealing with recognized exchanges. Ensure that you're dealing with compliant entities. And in my opinion, I, I, I think you're fine. Do your normal due diligence. If you want to make an investment, I mean, I don't offer financial advice. It's a cup of coffee if it goes north or it goes south. <laughs>
All right, Mazur, a very big thank you to you. Uh, I've been speaking with Nathaniel Loza. He is the CEO and co-founder of FlynnCap. And we have been looking at the Binance situation in the country, the need for compliance, and how we can actually uh, make uh, uh, the crypto you know, work very well for us in Nigeria and indeed Africa. We must uh, say a very big thank you to you, uh, Nathaniel, for joining us on the show this morning. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Yes. And that's the size of the show for today. Uh, many thanks for being there. Uh, my name is Justin Akadonia. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now. <laughs>